Imagine that the first day of Ramadan, and you said, I would fast. You will go to work, you will come back tired. You didn't experience this amount that you will stop eating and drinking for a long time. And then by end of day, you are really tired. And you might not be able even to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer. But if you are smart enough in planning, you will do the voluntary fasting ahead. And if you do the voluntary fasting ahead, it means that I'm used to that. I train myself, myself step by step. And when it comes that I have to do one complete month, I already used. I did once, I did twice, I did three times. In a hadith that narrated by Usama ibn Zayd. With telling Rasulullah he said, I found that you fast in Sha'ban more than any other months. So Rasulullah was training himself. And when he asked why, he said that this month is a month between Rajab and Ramadan. And a lot of people will not pay attention for it. And this is the month that all the deeds of the whole year will be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be raised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heaven that he will present it to him. And I would love that when my deed is presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will be fasting at this time. But if you look from planning, yes, he was training himself that when it came Ramadan, not getting food or water or so, it's something that you are used to. It will not take any of your thinking or effort because you are used to it. And then you will concentrate on how you get more reward. But if you will start over, it will be hard. The second thing is that if you would like to read Quran in Ramadan, the maximum benefit you want to get from Quran is not only reading, but if you want to get the maximum benefit, you have to contemplate, you have to understand, you have to think about the ayat, read it multiple times. And subhanAllah, it's, if you didn't start reading Quran, it will take you more time. You will not be able even to finish unless you push yourself so hard. But the people who already get used to read Quran before, when it came Ramadan, it will be something that they recently read, so they will come and will get better result in contemplation. You you skip the, the stage of just reading to the stage of contemplating on Quran. Ramadan is the month of charity and giving. In a hadith that uh, Rasulullah he was the most generous person. Can Rasulullah nas. He was the most generous person. But he will be much more generous in Ramadan. When Jibreel come and study the Quran with Rasulullah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwadu min al al mursala. So Rasulullah sallam was much more generous even from the wind that's coming fast. So imagine a wind that's coming fast in one direction and it will take everything in its way. So Rasulullah in his generosity was giving everything. And it's only in Ramadan, it was much more than others. If you want to be like him, yes, you will give charity. Inshallah, all of us are giving charity all the year. But in Ramadan, it should be much more. And if you want to give much more, it might come that Ramadan come and you don't even have money. You would like to, which is good, but do you have the money to give? But if you plan it ahead, you might save money from now to say that this will be the money I will give in Ramadan. I know some people that they say that every day I have to give something for Allah. So they start saving for Ramadan, they give all, other, all over the year, but in Ramadan they plan that they will give every day and they start saving for that purpose. They have a box, they call this is Ramadan box. I will give it and in Ramadan I will give it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the money is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will give it back. So if you want to achieve the maximum benefit in a charity, start now and plan ahead. So I combine some advices for myself and you, inshallah, that one, if we would like to get the benefit of Ramadan, we should start doing it. The first one is we have to establish our intention from now. You have to have a sincere intention that I want to, inshallah, this Ramadan I will fast it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man saama Ramadan, iman al wahtisaban, gufira lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. Whoever will fast Ramadan just as I believe and he will account this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive whatever he did. So if you want to start, start by intention. Plan from today that inshallah this Ramadan I will achieve the maximum. And if I plan today, and la qaddar Allah, if Allah, يعني, if God forbid that one of us is not, which is something that can happen to every one of us, that I am not able to reach Ramadan, or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yatawaffa, or may Allah, he became dead before that, that I will have the intention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward me because I have a sincere intention. We don't know if we will be able to reach Ramadan or not. But if we have the sincere intention, we will get the reward ahead. Second thing is the dua. 
as a sunnah rasulullah was saying oh allah give us the blessing of rajab and shaban and let us reach ramadan we start do this dua from now because yani a couple of days and we are in rajab let's do it from now let's make a dua for allah to guide us to worship him worship him in the correct way because you don't want to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of your effort only. It's a blessing that Allah guided you to be able to worship Him. So, dua is the most important thing from now in your plan. The second thing is Quran reciting. Start now and get and teach yourself how you can allocate a time to recite Quran. And if you started now with your job and everything, and your family and kids and your responsibilities. If you started now, you are able to allocate with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan while you are tired and busy schedule, you still would be able to allocate because timing to allocate time for reading Quran is important and it's not easy. So allocate it from now, plan it, choose the right time, plan your sleeping time, day. I will, I will sleep this time, I will wake up at this time, I will pray Fajr and Jama'ah, maybe I read Quran after, then I will go to work, or I will read Quran after I come back from work. Plan it ahead, because you don't know when it came to your reality, if you are able to do it or not. Choose and make a good plan that is suitable for you, because everybody is different. Then, fast voluntary. Start from now. Abu Zar, radiallahu an. Rasulullah he told him that if you want to fast, fast the three days of each 13, 14, 15 of each month. Uh, if you want to fast more, fast Monday and, and, and Thursday. When they asked Rasulullah why you always fast uh, Monday and Thursday, he said that this is two days. One day I was born at, and the other day is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at the deeds of Bani Adam. And then in Ramadan, make a sincere intention for repent and change. Plan from now what's wrong I'm doing and Ramadan will be the chance that I will use to change. I know a lot of people that they quit smoking in Ramadan. It's a bad habit. But they are able, and with the blessing of Allah in this blessed month, they are able to stop it from the sunrise to sunset. So they said, okay, since I, Allah will give me the power to do that, I will use this opportunity to change. I will use this opportunity to stop smoking. If somebody is nervous and so, Ramadan is the right time for change. Rasulullah said in hadith, Whoever will not stop saying the false words, saying and words and, and so, or, or the bad things that he's doing, it's, it's not something that Allah wants from us, that you stop eating and, and drinking. It, it's that you would like to change, so change and make a manner. And he's saying that if somebody even conflicted with you, you would say, in Nisa, and so it teach you control, self-control. I'm able to control myself. Scholars say that in Ramadan, you are able to stop what is permissible, what is commonly permissible. There is no problem in any day, in any day of the year, that you eat, drink, even have an intimate relation with your wife. But in Ramadan, you are not allowed to do that in a specific time. And that's a total submission for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will. You say to Allah, since you said that, I will do that regardless. And if you are able to control yourself to stop that, you stop the permissible, then you should be much more able to stop what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid, forbid you from doing. So you can take Ramadan as an opportunity to change for better, to have a better character. Rasulullah said in hadith, أَقْرَبَكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةَ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقَ The one who will sit very close to me at the day of judgment as the one who has the best manner. And Ramadan is a chance for the best manner. This is the time for a change. This is the time that you repent and you change yourself for better. And you should plan it. You should say, I am targeting this to change in Ramadan. I am targeting this bad habit, this bad manner, this sin. Whatever you are doing and you, you, you feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you account, accountable against, you should start planning that this is the thing that I will concentrate on and I will change it in Ramadan. And with the blessing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. Another thing is that charity. Give as much as you can. Rasulullah said, Allah will help you as long as you help others. If you would like the complete reward, give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the month of giving. You give. Rasulullah was always giving. Sahaba was always giving. People was giving in Ramadan much more than any other month. 
make your plan how you would like to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of how wealthy you are or even if you don't have, whatever you give in charity, it will fill in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take whatever you give, even if it's small, and He will raise it for you as if somebody has a small animal and He raised it until it became bigger. So Allah will raise it for you. And, and whatever is small, it's by blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will increase. Another thing is that take Ramadan as a chance for da'wah, for calling the other for Islam. Start by your family. Make a specific time for family to do zikr together. Specific family for uh, time for families that you learn about Islam together. Make it a change in your family that get them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allocate time for that. Plan it ahead in order to achieve it. If you didn't plan it, you might not have the chance to do it. It's a busy and it go very fast. If you didn't plan it ahead, you wouldn't be able to do it. So change your family, your friends. Make a plan that in Ramadan, I will call this friend who work with me or he live next to me. I will call, call him to Qiyam. I will encourage him to do Qiyam. I will encourage him to bring Jama'ah. I will encourage him to bring Fajr. And in the other wider circle, even people at work, it's very limited chance that you have an opportunity to talk about Islam. Ramadan is the best chance that you will talk about Islam. People are curious. They will ask why you are fasting, why you are not eating now, why you are not going to coffee now. And take this an opportunity to talk, to talk about your deen, make a da'wah. Talk about how beautiful Ramadan is and how blessed and how our religion is beautiful and it's good for others. And Ramadan is a chance. Plan it. Plan what you will say, how you will make the situation and how you introduce da'wah for others in this month. You have to plan it ahead. Last thing I will talk about is that eating, subhanAllah, Ramadan was always linked to the month of jihad, change, worship. And by some means, Muslims change it to the month of eating, watching TV, spending time in useless ways. But subhanAllah, if you plan ahead that I will make the chance of Ramadan, it's the time that I will change even my eating habits. I will try, people are spending millions in diets, surgeries that related to obesity and overweight and so, but subhanAllah is this month, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will help us in our health. If you plan ahead that in Ramadan, I will not get dragged into this big food and walima and all of that, no, I will eat what is adequate for me. That could be a better way even going to a specific uh, dietitian specialist and he will give you a diet or so. Like Ramadan is a chance to change for better and help even your health. Imam Shafi'i said, I have not filled myself in 16 years. He never eat too much until he filled his full for 16 years. And Rasulullah said in hadith, ma mala'a adamiyun wa'a'an so whoever, like as a son of Adam, he never felt something or, or a boat worse than his, his stomach. It's better not to do that. So make at least the intention, try as much as you can to do that. The last advice for all of us is that this is a month that our community should go together. Maybe you can plan how you will make a community iftar, how you make a community events, how you arrange together between yourself and, and, and just try to make something better for the community because it's all our own responsibility to make it better for the whole ummah. It's the month of unity. Everybody will come together. You might see faces in Ramadan that you never saw all over the years. This is the chance for us to unite our community again and, and work for better. Ibad ibn Samad was a great Sahabi who was saying in a hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَتَاكُمْ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ شَهْرُ بَرَكَةً فِيهِ خَيْرٌ يُغَشِّيكُمْ فِيهِ خَيْرٌ يُغَشِّيكُمُ اللَّهِ فَيُنَزِّلُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَتُحَطُّ فِيهِ الْخَطَايَا وَيُسْتَجَابُ فِيهِ الدُّعَاءِ يَنْظُرُ اللَّهَ إِلَى تَنَافِسَكُمْ تَنَافُسَكُمْ وَيُبَاهِ بِكُمْ مَلَائِكَتَهُ فَأَرُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ الشَّقِي مَنْ حُرِمَ فِيهِ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ So Ibad al-Musamid was saying in a hadith that, that this month of Ramadan is the month of blessing, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, reveal all his uh, mercy over you, and he will forgive your sins, and he will answer your dua, and he will look at you uh, at your, you when you are competing together for, uh, for getting more good uh, rewards and then he will show his angels and he says see how my servants are doing in this month so at that time show Allah from yourself something good 
just try to show Allah that oh Allah I came to you I plan that in this month I will show you that I am your servant I am the total submitted I totally submitted to, to you to your will I will stop not only eating and, 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 and drinking I will also stop any bad thing I'm do and I will do as much good deeds as I can أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا وأنت راض عنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم بلغنا رمضان أعواما عديدة وأزمنة مديدة اللهم بارك لنا في رجب وشعبنا وبلغنا رمضان وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين